Obesity is an increasing concern in our Western uh, industrial culture and weight management uh, is an issue for many people. Uh, some try diets and uh, medication and various uh, treatment plans with varying success. And hypnosis has had a uh, traditional place by uh, with the idea that somehow in hypnosis we can instruct someone, we can reprogram them. So that instead of wanting uh, fat food, they'll want the food that will make them thin. In the solution orientation, instead of having a set protocol that we're going to apply to whoever comes along, we're more likely to find out from uh, each individual what they've tried that hasn't worked, what is missing for them so that if they had it they would be able to succeed in their efforts, what resource might be somehow around but uh, out of reach or apparently out of reach that they've disconnected from. By asking them about what they like we can often find something about who the person is, what, how they tick, what works for them and then there can often be an opportunity to apply that in this particular field. Um, by working with people individually and finding out what's wrong, what's missing for them, uh, what's wrong in what they've been attempting, uh, we find that uh, it's not a homogeneous situation. Some people uh, try so hard but to not eat things that uh, they can generate an obsession. And some people are so resigned to the situation that they've given up. And many times I've heard people say, I can't imagine myself being the way I want to be. So if someone can't imagine it uh, and that's missing for them, then clearly it's going to be pretty hard for them to achieve something unimaginable. And so by uh, helping in hypnosis, helping different people have their different individual experiences, we can help to connect them with a useful resource that's going to uh, enhance their likelihood of being able to achieve what they want. If someone can't imagine being thin, then we can do some age progression and ask someone to imagine that they have gone into the future, that they are the way they want to be, and then start to explore with them how that looks, how that feels, what they're doing differently, how their family are reacting, and give uh, more and more texture to that experience and make it more real, so then it becomes a real possibility rather than some vain hope. Um, if someone is uh, disillusioned with their efforts, uh, not infrequently they get disillusioned with their body. And people will say, I hate my body, uh, it's uh, uncooperative, it won't work with me, I've got to use willpower to control it. And in all of that well-intended activity, making an enemy out of the body is hardly likely to evoke a sense of an experience of cooperation from the body. So in that situation we can invite someone to, in, their, in hypnosis or in their real life, imagine that they're looking at their body and starting to accept it, starting to acknowledge it, starting to be grateful to it, maybe even in some extreme situations where people uh, What's really missing for them is an acceptance and appreciation, maybe even asking to apologise to their body for the way they have mistreated it. And we can either offer this as direct ideas uh, that you could do this, or we can offer the idea in the form of stories about other people who uh, have uh, attempted such things and had a varying uh, variation in their experience so that it becomes possible. Um, most overeating, like most, uh, if not all, unwanted behaviour, happens in dissociation, happens in some disconnected state where we become disconnected with what we are wanting to achieve 
uh, we get lost in the moment, we start to eat uh, with our eyes instead of with our mouth. And uh, uh, if someone is dissociated, disconnected in their eating, and then it becomes apparent that what's missing then is a greater sense of connection, we can invite them to be more connected in the hypnotic experience with their body, to really notice their feet, really notice the air as they breathe and so on, and then uh, set the scene for them to really notice the look of the food, the smell of it, the taste of it, the feel of it, the sound of it, the experience of it. And by then helping them to connect them, connect them and associate them, then that helps to resolve the disconnection which may have been part of the problem. So many different ways that people uh, will get into trouble in relation to that, and instead of having a one-size-fits-all uh, approach, uh, you must lose weight, you won't eat this, you will eat this, you, you're going to do this, you're not going to do that, uh, to look with each individual and find out what's going on for them, what's missing for them, that if they had it they would be able to succeed, makes a much more lively, uh, more effective, uh, more uh, pleasing experience all around, more satisfying all around. Thanks for coming along and being willing to be part of this, Sue. Appreciate that. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, good. good. <laughs> and is it okay to videotape this? I'm just asking your yes, permission so. yes. officially to use for future teaching yes. purposes. Quite all right. Well, thanks for that too. Now, um, can you tell us what sort of things you do that are enjoyable and pleasing and uh, fun? Enjoyable? Yeah. Well, what sort of things are you... Um, I enjoy going to the gym. I enjoy gardening. Um, I enjoy painting, although I haven't done much of it lately. Mm -hmm. um, what sort of garden do you... Oh, just around the you know, house, that sort of thing. Is it a native garden or a cottage um, garden? Or it's thing? cottage, more cottage than native, yes. And uh, do you have any particular kind of plants that you have? Are they into perennials? No, or? Um, well, some are perennials, some are yeah. annuals. Oh, yeah. um, we have more of a probably slightly Tuscan looking area out the back okay. and fruit trees. Okay. Kumquats and things like that. Okay. Your roses, so it's all mixed in. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. camellias. <coughs> and um, are you the gardener or are you, are you the...? Yes, I'm the one that does the digging and the pulling out and everything and my husband does the cleaning up. Okay. <laughs> but that's why we have husbands. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that's I've, right. I've, I've, I've got some use too. But, uh, they do have a... <laughs> yes. And painting? What sort of painting do you do? Well, painting. I used to do just, you know, a um, little bit of art at home. I uh, started off just painting flowers and things like that. We're but I must admit I haven't done any painting for a couple of years. Okay. Mainly, I think, because of work when I was working. And I've only, I've been retired now for, well, I was retired until the beginning of this week. And for about 18 months, two years. Okay. And you started now, working again? I started working again with my husband on Monday. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Two days a week. All oh, right. And <laughs> the painting challenge. that you did, was that oil or watercolour? Or? Uh, watercolours. Watercolour. Yes. Okay. And mostly flowers, did you say? Yeah, plus mostly flowers, some animals, things like that. Oh, yeah. And when you did that, did you sketch... Um, what you're going to do and then yes, fill and then, that in with, yes, with, I did. with pencil? Well, both, both ways. I did, oh, yeah. um, I did some sketching with charcoal, I did some with um, crayon. Oh, what I mean with the watercolour, did you put an outline? Draw, did you draw first, an outline and then yes. fill in? Did sometimes, you, sometimes I did, right. sometimes I didn't, sometimes just paint straight on. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. And when you did draw the outline, was that, did you use a pencil for that? Or, I'm not very... Very soft pencil. Soft yes. pencil. Yeah. And then what, rub it out afterwards? Or no, what? just paint over it. it. Paint over it. Mm. Okay. Mm. Sorry. Mm. Okay. Now, <coughs> what could we 
do here that would be useful for you? Well, I'm hoping that you're going to be able to help me control my weight. For 35 years, I've been battling with it. Oh. And I've been going to weight And it's been battling with you? Oh, it certainly has. Mm. And I've just lost 12 kilos. Okay, you're winning and, that battle. Uh, well, I did for a while, but for the last probably 10 weeks, I've been on the same weight. Oh, and it's fighting I've, back now. Yes, and I've put on another kilo, and I've just struggling. Um, mm. I can't say no <laughs> to you food. Can't. Someone brings a nice piece of cake, I can't say, no, I don't need that. And it's not as if I'm hungry. That's just that it's uh, a constant thing with mm. me. Mm. And if I go into the kitchen, the fridge is there, I always open the fridge. And I seem to walk into the kitchen and think, I have to eat here. Mm -hmm. I'm not hungry. Mm. And it's I'm almost like the kitchen or the fridge hypnotises you. Yes, it does. It, it hypnotises me. Open the door. That's right. Eat this food. <laughs> That's right. You cannot resist. Yes. And you don't need to drink water. It's better to have a piece of cake, it says to me. You could. <laughs> if you th the thirstier you are, the more, more you need to avoid the water. That's right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I know the basis behind it. I've been going to Weight Watchers and all sorts of things for you a long, long time. I know what no. I should be doing. You're trying to tell me that you've been doing something for 35 years that hasn't worked and you know what to do? You I know to what to do, that? but I can't do it. What? I know mentally what I've got to do, but I can't do it. Okay. <laughs> That's where I so you've been help. trying to do the same thing for 35 years unsuccessfully. On and off. And you want things. my help so, yes, that I do. Can, so that you can be <laughs> that a more successful in, in doing something that's, that you haven't been able to do for 35 years. Well, I did it for a short period of time to get 12 kilos off. You did. But already yes. that, but that 12 kilos is fighting back. It is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very naughty. Well, uh, I don't know. So I need a bit of help. Okay. Well, what I'm wondering, uh, and I'm just wondering if you might be open to the idea of having a different approach to this. Mm -hmm. Open to any ideas at all. Okay. Um, you know, one definition of insanity. <laughs> is to keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different outcome. Yes. Well, now, you're not the family. only insane person in this room. <laughs> We've all done that. But I, I, I'm just wondering if you can see that the, what you have been trying to do, the kind of battle that you've been in, this kind of like a civil war going on for 35 years, you know, the, the you win and the... the the, win and kind of lose all the, the no man's land moves, but if you win, it's just a matter of time till that fights back, and then you for 35 years it's been a battle. Mm -hmm. yes. And I wonder whether I can interest you in the possibility of, of having a different approach. Now, I'm not sure what that will be, but um, I have to tell you, I'm very reluctant to become the hired guns for this battle. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll get, I think I'm likely to get my arms and legs shot off. Oh, I don't you know? think so. No? Well, no. it's been a battleground. It has. And I think if I get into the battleground, I don't know that that's going to help uh, in any permanent way. It might, but <coughs> I'm, I'm more interested in finding a different way of tackling this. Mm -hmm. And as such, it might seem a little strange because I might offer some ideas that are not uh, uh, they mightn't sound sensible at one level. Well, what I'm doing is obviously not too sensible well, either. <laughs> well, I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to emphasise that what you've been doing is common sense. It's what what we all do, mm. just that it hasn't worked. Mm. That's right. So maybe if we can find something, something else. And <clears throat> have you had anything, um, any experience with hypnosis before this? Well, or? only what Jane has done. Okay. So she's been practicing with you? A couple of times, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Well, we know that you're a good hypnotic subject because the fridge has been hypnotising you for years. It has, yes. So we just need and to find... And also, Jane can tell you that I did go out to it because I was snoring. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. <laughs> if you start doing that, I won't be offended. I think you're bored. There you are. All right. Just completely relaxed. Okay. I was. It was wonderful. Okay. Then you liked the feeling. I loved it. Yeah. Yes. And when you had that feeling, how hungry were you? I wasn't hungry at all. I was no. just completely relaxed. And how much battling were you doing? None. Yeah. None so I think all. there's something there that you've got already got a hint of, that there may be another way of... That I've got to learn to hypnotise myself. Well, I don't know. Or control uh, the thoughts. I don't know. It could be. Um, but let's just say there's another way that doesn't involve a battle. Learning to relax. Maybe. Maybe that. And it is easy for you, isn't it? Do you notice something starting to happen now? Well, I'm quite relaxed. You are. Yes. <clears throat> and um, that started, and I haven't really uh, suggested that you do that, but it's, it's just mm. somehow natural for you. And I wonder if it would be all right if you were to just allow that to continue. Mm. That's it. So without needing to make any effort, or even trying to decide when to close your eyes or uh, just at what point you should do that. Perhaps you could just notice the tendency for your eyes to close and not try and fight that or push that or just go along with that. That's it. And then as you allow that to continue, you could perhaps take a moment to notice how easy it is for you to breathe in and then to breathe out. How natural, how effortless, how perfectly peacefully that can happen. In fact, it might even be something that you could enjoy noticing as you attend to your breathing, that that can in itself add to your sense of relaxation and peace within yourself. easily and effortlessly. And as you continue to simply allow I could remind you that in your gardening put different plants in and the plants that you plant grow into the plants that they are. And according to the garden that you want, so you plant the plants that will grow into that garden and become that garden. If you're looking to have more of this colour or that shape or that foliage, do you want some height, or you want some cover, some ground cover? When you found your own way of mixing those different plants, those different kinds of plants that can fit together so nicely, 
and they can be in the same garden together, quite different, and fit together perfectly well. And I wonder if you could imagine perhaps to begin by remembering the feeling when you are painting a flower or an animal or whatever remember the experience of First of all, making the outline with that soft pencil. And then filling in those spaces and painting over the line. With a, perhaps a pleasurable, perhaps peaceful, enjoyable recollection. And I can say some things that will be obvious, but that according to the outline that you draw, so the painting takes shape. Does that make sense when I say that? That you draw a particular animal, it ends up looking like that animal, not like a flower, obviously. So I wonder if in your mind's eye you could pick up a soft pencil and draw an image the image that I'm asking you inviting you to draw is an image not of an animal, not of a flower, but of you. And I wonder if you could draw an image of how you want to look. And just draw the image. Uh, you might be naked, you might be wearing particular clothes, that's for you to know, for you to choose. And you can be in any position, you can be sitting, standing, dancing, gardening, whatever. And you don't need to see it accurately in your mind to have the idea of that experience. But as I speak about that and invite you to notice the experience as if you are drawing that outline, what happens to you, sir? As I, can you see that outline in your mind's eye? Hmm. And can you say, in general, you don't have to, but I'm curious, how does that look? Does it look okay? Looks fine. Okay. And then as this experience is continuing, then, could you imagine that you are now filling in? You're painting that. Using watercolour. Different colours, different whatever you're doing. So that you start to fill in that, those spaces. And you could continue doing that and there may have been times in the past when you've been painting, <clears throat> when you've been so absorbed in that that other things have been going on in the background and you haven't need to pay attention to that. Because you can become absorbed in it, can you not? So, if you would, 
I would like you to allow yourself to become as absorbed in that experience of painting that image so that it becomes as satisfyingly real and peacefully real as you can be satisfied with that. And I can speak to any part of your understanding that can be interested to listen and learn something useful without you needing to pay attention to that at all. Because I could say that if there's something in your garden that you don't want, you can dig it out, you can throw it out, you can put it in the bin, you can chop it up, put it in the compost, throw it to the tip, you can do anything. You don't need to keep anything you don't want. You can simply dig it out. And even if it takes effort, like going to the gym, there can be satisfaction in that. And if there are some parts of your body where there's some excess, more than you want, like some perennials just grow, you need to dig them up, otherwise they take over. You might be interested to find ways of throwing them out, giving them away, I don't know what. But you don't need to keep anything in your garden that you don't want. It's up to you. You're the gardener. And there is a way in which you can think of your body as a garden. You don't have to do anything in any particular way. I learned from a doctor in America who told me that a woman had been battling with her weight for decades. She would lose the weight and then put it on again. Then she would lose it, then put it on again. She'd been doing that for a long time and was getting a little frustrated This woman was very fond of dogs. And Erickson told her a number of things. Firstly, he said, if you had treated your dogs like you treated your body, they would have left home years ago. If you forced your dogs, starved your dogs, and then stuffed them the way you've done with your body, they would become uncooperative. They would become very aggressive, and there would be a battle. And she said, I would never do that to my dogs. I'm good friends with my dogs. Oh, she said, perhaps I need to make friends with my own body. And he said to her, one of the ways that some people can learn to make friends rather than enemy of their body is by getting to know. It. And he suggested to her, that in the privacy of her own home, she should stand naked in front of a full-length mirror 
and look at her body from the front, from the back, from this side, from that side, from this position, from that position, and apologize to her body for all the conflicts that she had involved herself with the body. To apologize. And then to keep looking until she could accept this is the body I have. And to keep looking until she got past her arrogance greed at wanting this or that kind of body and being grateful for the body that she did have. And he asked her if in the process of doing that she might be able to find one or two ounces that she could comfortably let go of. And after that experience, there was no dramatic change in her eating. There was no dramatic change in her body. But she started to feel so much better within herself And then gradually, bit by bit, most of that weight just seemed to fall away. And what was so surprising to her was that after all of those years of struggling, there was actually no effort. Almost a sense of relief. And I don't know how you could do this, but somehow, because you have been able to be hypnotized by the fridge, by the cake, by the ideas of the food, you can now be hypnotized by that image that you have created of your body the way you want it to be. And it can be as if that image can hypnotize you, can take charge of your experience. And even when you might have thought that you might be hungry, that image can hypnotize you and you can discover. I thought I felt like cake, but actually I feel like a glass of water. Or it may not be water. It may be just the pleasure of breathing or the pleasure of looking forward. image becoming a reality. And as you make friends with that image, as that image becomes more and more real for you, it can be so natural, so effortless, that I hope you don't feel too embarrassed after all the effort that you've put in, in the past, and how easy, how natural
how inevitable this can be. And that image that you are creating, how is it going? You've started to fill in some of the... How's it looking? It's looking better. Looking better, yeah. I hope it's not perfect. Because as human beings, that same teacher told me that he had faults and that some of the faults that he had he was determined to keep because he said the faults that I am going to keep They are my permission for Betty's wife to keep the faults that she's going to keep. And he said she's determined to keep some of her faults. And the faults that she is determined to keep is in turn her permission for him to keep the faults that he's going to keep. And he looked directly at me and he spoke directly to me and said, make sure you keep some of your faults because living with an angel is sheer hell. And he had a wry way of putting things. But that image is looking better how real is it when you look at it? It's something to achieve. Yes. And as you look at it, just as when you do the outline and you haven't filled in with the paint, it gives an outline of how it's going to be. So this image can be a direction of something that you can achieve. But you thought you had to battle and fight. When you paint, how much battling and fighting do you do? None. None. So my invitation is for you to allow that image to be there. As something to achieve. And as a guide, as a, just as the soft pencil outline is a guide to your painting. So that image that you have, and it is you, can be a guide to your eating. And I would hope that what I'm saying although it can make sense at one level, I'm hoping that it doesn't entirely make sense to you. I'm hoping that it seems just a little strange, perhaps obvious, because I'm hoping that you will allow yourself a little time for this learning. To settle, just as it takes time for watercolour to dry, just as it takes time for plants in the garden to grow. Just as it takes time for a rose to bloom. So this experience, this learning can take time. And it might be really nice if you could Just let yourself sit with this. It's like you plant something and you let it settle in. You water it in. It's 
It's like when you finish a, a painting. You let it sit. Because I am just a little worried. Because there's a possibility of out of this experience you're having a very real dilemma. After this experience, it might be very, very difficult for you. To discover, to deal with the fact, to accept the experience that this really can. be easy effortless and natural just as breathing in and out can be relaxing easy and natural. And I've done a lot of talking. But you've done a lot of painting. Preparing the soil plant the plants and then sit back and watch some painters tell me that when they're painting at the best they let the paint brush do the paint They don't try and control anything. I really can't know how you can allow this learning, because it's a learning. I'm not trying to restrict you or force anything. And you do know that depending on what you plant, so that's what grows. And you do know that depending on the outline in your painting, so the painting takes shape. So you can expect a good outcome from this. And I don't think there needs to be any struggle in allowing this experience to come to a natural conclusion. If you were to try and open your eyes, it might be a bit of a battle.
but if you just let them open. I um, appreciate your willingness to be in such a strange circumstance. And um, I mustn't be as good a hypnotist as <laughs> Jane, because you didn't do any snoring for me. <laughs> I, I did a lot of painting. I, I'm feeling a little bit, uh, in, a little bit uh, inadequate because, you know, obviously you enjoyed the painting? Yes, I enjoyed the painting. Good. And it's good to do good painting and to see the way it can evolve and be satisfied. Do you have any questions that you uh, want to ask me? No, I don't think so. I think I've got to think about a few things. Yeah. Yes. And does it seem like that's something that, that might be useful to you? Yes. Yeah. I think the ability to be able to relax. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and you can relax into that chair. You can relax into uh, some other chair mm. when Jane's working with you. And you can relax into that image. When you relax into that chair, you don't need to do anything with the chair. You just... Just sit and relax. Yeah, mm. to let it happen. Go with it. Go with it. And in a different chair, you might relax in a different position or a different way. And so with that image, you can just go with that too. Um, I'm wondering, is that a place that we might stop? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm just asking. Yeah. Is there something no, more that you might no, want me to say? Or? No, I think that's fine. I think okay. it's given me a lot to think about. Okay. Yes. And well, thanks for being very, here. Very, very relaxing. On. Relaxing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Wonderful feeling. And when, when, you, when you're relaxed like that and you're enjoying that feeling, a whole lot of things can just kind of settle into place. Mm. Well, it's certainly a different outlook on it. I think Being you able to relax, yes. I think, you need I think, that. It, yes. I think what you've been doing uh, is been remarkably... been intense about it. Yeah, remarkably persistent, but it, it actually, you know, if something's <laughs> not working, then it's... That's so right. eventually it's a matter of saying, oh, we need to find a Change it. Yeah, change it. Mm.